right, well, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I've got a paint job going on. Finally getting to the point where I'm painting up some of these uh, mullet swim baits. But this video is going to be about some experimental hinges for swim baits. Check it out. Okay, so I want to talk to you today about what the hinge style you use does to the action of the lure that you're actually making. So if you've been watching this channel at all, you'll know that I do a lot of experimentation. And one of the first experiments I did with a, a swim bait hinge uh, was this double pin a hinge plate arrangement, which allows the lure to sort of rotate around itself and actually fold all the way up. The action on this is actually pretty interesting. Let me show you some underwater shots. So I don't know if it was obvious in the footage that the lure actually wants to sort of have the back of the lure move forward of the front of the lure, which is mind-boggling, and it has a very quirky movement. And that kind of uh, gave me some real encouragement to, to do some additional experimentation and jump from only a single hinge to, to three hinges. And this really was an ordeal of experimentation. Let me show you how it acted in the water when I first put this thing together. And you can see how weird and quirky that double hinge action is with this many segments. It, it was sort of folding in and on itself. It would rotate and get parallel to itself. Very strange, but one of the most distinct elements was that most of the movement, or actually almost all of the movement, was in those back two pieces. And as I did further experiments, and I won't bore you with all the experiments, I realized that too much range of motion was giving me a very erratic and unpredictable kind of movement, but also was like I said, pushing all that movement to the tail, which is not something I wanted. I wanted a full body action uh, for this lure, and I achieved it. Let me show you the footage after I made all the modification. So you can see it has a really nice full body serpentine movement and that's really what I was shooting for. And of course that's just my personal preference. Uh, lots of folks like the lure to have just a tail movement. Now I talked about in an earlier video how extending the lure actually moves that movement back on the lure. So here's a couple of examples that I showed back then. Here it is with five segments. I'm running some little hook simulators. That's simply to simulate the weight of the hook. You can see how the movement has been pushed all the way to the back of the lure and you've got to pull it pretty fast to get a full action. Now I've always thought that if you were making a swim bait to look like a needlefish, that's the way to go. I'll put the last two segments on there to show you how exaggerated it gets. Here you go. A little odd looking, but let's give it a shot. Now the swimming action is really pushed all the way to the back of the lure and it's really difficult to get it to really move well. You've got to really crank it in. So let's talk about why. Why is, why is it making such a big difference? Well, in my experimentation, there are three basic types of hinges. The first one, and the weirdest, is the double hinge. And that creates its own problems. It has a very quirky movement, but it's probably not something most people want. So the second one is what I ended up with this big four segment one. And it's also what I ended up using 
on my three-piece one that I just made and that I really love how it acts. This hinge style I'm calling a power hinge just because I need a name. So if you're looking down at the lure, that's the head, and you have a hinge plate that sticks out with a hole in it, and this is embedded in the lure. It also has a pin in it. And then the, the piece just behind there is rounded so that it has range of movement and then extends back. And then you have that same arrangement going back. The key here, the big difference, is that the point of, of pivot is up inside the second segment. And what that does is it forces that segment to come out of alignment, not just flowing, but actually extend out beyond the section of the body, and it causes greater turbulence than you would with it with what would be your typical kind of hinge. Let me show you that. Now this is what many people use. Now lots of folks use some version of this hinge, which is basically just looped eyes or, or screw-in eyes that loop together. And lots of folks use this kind of arrangement in some way or other. And this kind of hinge I'm, I call a, a banner hinge. And let me tell you why. If you can imagine this is a flagpole, and attached to this flagpole is a banner or flag. And it's out in the wind. It doesn't hang out there straight like that. Right? It flutters in the wind. And that fluttering movement goes from a very small wave, larger and much larger as you go out. It creates a sinusoidal wave that increases in amplitude as you go away. And the reason for that is that this is held tight while this is free to move. And the energy that's being imposed on this flag is this flow of, of air, in this case, that becomes more and more turbulent as it goes out. That turbulence, as it is in, in lures, that turbulence is just energy and it needs to find a way out of there. It's trying to dissipate and it's going to find the path of least resistance, the lowest energy path out of this dynamic model. In the case of a banner hinge, you're going to get the same kind of movement. You're going to get the head moving very little and the tail having a much greater amplitude. Now, all these differences are, like I said before, is really up to you. What you like, what you find aesthetically pleasing, what you think will work to catch fish. I, I'm not trying to sell any particular style. What I'm doing is showing you how the, the movement changes and why. This way you can design your own lure to move the way you want it to. But there's a hybrid. This is a hybrid between the banner hinge and the power hinge. And instead of having the plate fixed in the front and pinned in the back, it's fixed in the back and pinned here. And what that does is it causes it to act very much like a, a banner hinge where you get that sweeping movement. This is still swinging from inside the front hinge. Uh, portion of the body and it causes a little more turbulence so you get a little more of a, of a wacky movement. It isn't as fluid as uh, the banner hinge is, this traditional kind of hinge. This style is probably best used in a two-part lure. It gives a really nice notchy kind of movement uh, and still has a lot of flexibility. So enough talk. I want to show you side by side uh, how these perform uh, on the dock and so you can see the difference in the action. These lures are all exactly the same. They, they're weighted. They have the same amount of internal weight. And hopefully you'll see what a big difference it makes uh, to have a different kind of hinge. All right. Um, we're in between rain, rainstorms here. Uh, hopefully we'll have enough time to do this. Uh, but the water is nice and calm, so we should be able to see down into it uh, at least, you know, a few inches. This is murky water. So the first one that I'm going to show you is the one that I just designed. This is the one that we've been uh, building on the last couple of videos. And I just want to use this as my baseline. This is what I like. This is the movement and the swim action that I like. And so I'm going to do all of them, but then I'll put them side by side on the video so you can really see the difference. Okay, so I put the little weights on it. You see, that's just to imitate uh, the weight of the hook. Let me move the camera. 
the movement is through the whole body and not just the tail or the midsection. It actually has a nice steady flow all the way. And this is the action I really like. This is what I want to see in my lures. Not everybody likes it, I understand. Okay, so that's the swimming mullet with the power hinge. Now let's move on to the next one. Here's the next one. It's the banner hinge. And we'll see what kind of difference that hinge makes. You can see how it's really the last two pieces that are actually moving. That's a nice movement though, you gotta admit. That's why a lot of folks really prefer this movement. Let's see if I can crank it in a little smoother. I'm twitching it around too much. All right, let's move on to the hybrid and you'll see what a weird uh, combination of the two movements there is. All right, so here it is. This is the, what I call a, ban a banner power hinge, uh, which is the hybrid between those two style hinges. where it tends to move mostly in the back tail, but every now and then the head jerks around a little bit. See, see that? Definitely more of a segmented movement, right? It doesn't look quite as fluid and it doesn't give the appearance of being one piece. Now let's look at them side by side. On the left, you've got the power hinge, then the banner in the middle, and the hybrid on the right. Swimming side by side, you can begin to see the difference, even at normal speeds like this. But if you slow it down to half speed, you can really tell the difference, and even more at one-third the speed. You can really see how big the movement is on the left, and then sort of moderate in the middle, and then just kind of a little strange on the right. All right, I know what you guys are thinking. Enough with the hinges already. Well, I'm out here uh, at the local reservoir out here. The water is a little murkier than it usually is, but it's a perfect opportunity for me to go ahead and show you the swim action of the first uh, swimming mullet. The hooks are on, this thing's ready to rumble. So let me get the camera in the water and I'll give you a parting shot of the swim action of this lure. So until next time, thanks a lot for sitting through all this information and thank you uh, for all the comments and all the encouraging words you guys uh, drop off there in the uh, comment section. And if you get a chance, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you on the next video.